So let's go ahead and talk a bit more about the code for everybody who's probably new to Go. So over here, we declare a package. And in Go, if you want to run anything, the executable or the entry point needs to be defined within a package main. Next, we define a set of imports that we're going to be using. Um, just for clarity, net.http is used pretty much for obtaining the um, server-based functionality that we're going to be using. FMT, or short for format, is used for outputting stuff to uh, whatever type of output you want. It could be standard out, it could be anything you want. Time is just a library used for obtaining time, so in our case we'll be using time.now. HTML template has all the libraries and functions necessary for creating templates, your HTML templates, and allowing them to be um, displayed. In our case, we're going to go ahead and create a welcome struct. Now, for those who are not familiar with what a struct is, it's very similar to a class in like uh, C++, C++ or Java. So you can actually think of this as a welcome class. Um, but yeah, it is a struct, very C-like in particular. Within the structs, we have a name and time object, and each of them are both strings. And the reason we have a struct is that it will hold all the information we want, and it's actually just a more compact way of uh, defining similar stuff. Within our main function, this is our entry point, the same way in Java or C++ you do have your main method. This is where every execution starts. We'll go ahead and declare our variable called welcome. And welcome will be exactly the struct, and will, the first argument is usually the first argument you define within the struct, so this will be name. So the name will just say it's called anonymous. And the second argument, which is time, will just be a time.now. And all that's going to do is um, output the information about the current time you, on, on your local machine. The next thing we're going to go ahead and do is create this templates variable. Now this templates variable will hold information about our template and our template is what we created over here which houses all the html information and all that and then we'll use a template that must function and that will parse in or take in the output from parsing the html and last but not least after creating html it's important that we also include our css and remember what i said earlier just because your html is parsed in using the template doesn't mean the other files that your html requires are also going to be parsed in and so what we do is we create an HTTP.handle. So handle takes in a file path um, called static. Remember, we created our CSS file within a static slash uh, style sheets. HTTP.handle creates a server that begins to serve files within this particular directory. So I'm going to go ahead and scroll down on this. Just close this. So once those files are served, we can just remove the prefix over here. So the best way to describe what's happening in this section over here is to almost work backwards. What we want to do is to create some form of file server. And that file server, we give the directory static. So the server will start to serve files from the static directory. And remember when we created our CSS files, we used, we actually placed them, the top level directory within the project was actually called static. When we work backwards, the next thing you want to, I'll, I'll just skip strip prefix for now. The next thing you want to uh, take note of is this handle. So what handle does is it tells the server, hey, listen, if you see static anywhere right that means you should start serving or should already have the ability to, to be serving those files from this directory over here this can actually be anything and so long as you're consistent so you can have this called whatever uh my files and within our html let me just actually jump the, to my html real quick i have to close this within our html instead of saying static here instead of saying static over here we'll now use um, my files and then the same path because the server knows that hey whenever i see this handle called my files replace it with static or replace it with that folder that we're serving from which was that static folder all right so so far we have defined our welcome struct what's it so what our struct is going to say we've also defined our http template and told the server how to serve files for, for our css now we actually need to um, define our entry point to the server and this is done using this handler function or handle func. So the handle func says, hey, whenever you see or the web browser directs to this path, which is just a slash or by default, this is like um, in our case, it's just be localhost 80 zero actually 8080 slash or without the slash. It knows, hey, the moment someone directs to this particular URL, start run this function immediately. And so the, there's a reason why the handle func has a function attached to it. And so this function takes in a response writer as well as a request. And the response writer, we're not going to really touch too much into it right now, but all the response writer does is that it sends back the information to the client. In our case, the client is the web is your web browser. And the request is what the incoming request to your server was. So this will have all your information about 
the client made a particular request that had this URL, had all this, this body, these headers, that you can find within here. Our response writer, on the other hand, will respond when we're done processing everything, we'll use a response writer to write back to our client. So that's, that's just gonna simple uh, dive into what this particular section is. So let's talk about this if statement real quick. So Go has this very interesting way of defining um, using if statements. It's not intuitive at all initially, but it does make sense. Um, and it kind of makes for a bit, code, code becomes a bit more readable and shorter. What's happening here is this is a declaration. We're saying name is equal to whatever is in this request. Um, so if you parse the request using this function called form value, and we're looking for this name. So if you pass in a name like Martin, like shown in this comment, well, it will be saved to this variable called name. I mean, effectively, this could be outside. This could, could be a declaration above the if statement, but Go allows you to actually keep it nested within the if statement. So once the value coming out of here has been stored into name, we'll check is name not equal to zero. Oh, is, is name not empty? And if name is not empty, then what we're going to go ahead is we're going to set our welcome variable we said earlier, that name is equal to this name, so long as it's not empty. If it's empty, it's probably going to just remain empty. And the last element within our handle func, we need to be able to pass back information to the client. So far, all the server has been doing is trying to parse the name uh, argument. We need to be able to send back HTML information to our client. Chrome needs to be able to see that HTML information. And so what we do is we end up executing our template. So we call the library templates. Notice this is different from template that we created earlier. We pass in the response writer. Remember what we said about the response writer W is that it sends information back to our client. And we also give it um, name. And we pass in our welcome um, struct. Remember welcome has our information about the greeting we're going to end up getting. And if once again, this if statement is very similar to this one. We're setting if this particular function returns an error, we're going to check is the error not nil, meaning there is an error. And if there is an error, we just return HTTP error. In our case, we're using W because remember, W is a response writer. This is how we're going to tell our clients, hey, listen, there was an error. We'll pass in the information about the error as well as the type of error. We'll say it's a status internal server error. So that's the function that's going to run the moment you hit this endpoint. So you can have different endpoints. Imagine building a very complex app. You have several endpoints. You can have a slash, I don't know maybe greeting or slash whatever you want. So you can have different ones and different functions that respond to these different endpoints been hit. Last but not least, we print a little line over here telling us that, hey, our server is actually running. Um, it's important to do this because once you start to run these things within, let's say different environments, you pretty much have no clue if the server is running or not. So it's nice to kind of print the st standard out to kind of let you know, hey, listen, the server is running on this port. So this last statement over here starts the server. HTTP.listen and serve takes a port. So this port is actually a string. We can change that to 8081 or whatever port is not used. If you do change this port, it's important to change the URL on the web browser. So this is this is pretty important. Sometimes you can just actually throw that in as an argument. The reason it's just a port number because it already assumes localhost um, in front of it. And here we're just going to pass in nil. And the reason we wrap around a format dot print line is because if there's an error thrown out here, the format that print line will just throw the error. And that's pretty much it. That's everything we have to show. I hope this detailed walkthrough helped you kind of understand what's happening within the Golang server. Um, the key areas, like I said, are definitely within your handler func, because this is where the processing happens right when your endpoint's been hit and uh, starting the server as well as whatever variables you want to initialize.